Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with lemon poppy seed scones with fresh strawberry glaze. That's right, if you're looking for a tasty and beautiful treat for that special occasion brunch, like Mother's Day, for example, this might be just what you need. Unless, of course, mom has an upcoming drug test, in which case these scones could cause a problem, at least according to what I've heard in some sitcoms. But anyway, let's assume that's not going to be an issue. And to get started, what we'll do is add some self-rising flour to this bowl. And I'm sure a lot of you are thinking, is Chef John sponsored by the self-rising flour people? Well, I probably should be, but I'm not. I just think it works better for recipes like this than using regular flour with baking powder and salt added in, which will still work, just not quite as well in my experience. And of course, I'll explain both options in the blog post. And then to our flour, we will add one stick of very, very cold butter that we've cut into a bunch of small pieces. And then what we'll do is take one of these wire pastry cutters, also sometimes known as pastry blenders, and we'll go ahead and work this over for a few minutes, pressing that cutter all the way to the bottom of the bowl. And what this is gonna do is take our couple dozen chunks of butter and turn it into thousands of little pieces of butter. And generally, we wanna keep doing this until this mixture resembles coarse crumbs, or in other words, looks like this. All right, we can see tons of little tiny pieces of butter, but there aren't really any chunks bigger than a kernel of corn. And then what we'll do once that's been accomplished is go ahead and add some poppy seeds, our white sugar, and at least a tablespoon of freshly grated lemon zest, which is one of the keys here, so don't leave that out. And then we'll go ahead and give this a quick mix. And by the way, we're gonna add some lemon juice later, so always make sure you zest your lemon before you try to juice it, as it really does not work out too well the other way around. But anyway, we'll go ahead and give that a quick mix, at which point we'll make a little well in the center and proceed to add our wet ingredients. And those will include one large beaten egg, that freshly squeezed lemon juice we just talked about, and last but not least, some whole milk. And then once all that's in, we'll go ahead and grab a fork and start stirring. And then here's where things get a little bit messy. Because what we're gonna do here is mix this with a fork until it just sorta of comes together and looks like this. At which point we'll get in there with our hand and our fork. And we'll kinda of mix and press and squeeze this all together until we have a very dry looking, extremely shaggy dough. Which is not to be confused with a Scooby dough. All right, this is a shaggy dough. And what we'll do once we reach this stage is transfer it onto our table, and we will use both hands to gather everything together, sort of pressing and very gently kneading, and possibly turning occasionally, until we've basically gathered everything together into a dough that we can somehow, some way, shape into a rectangle. And by the way, don't be afraid to use your bench scraper for this. And because we did start with such a shaggy, loose dough, by the time we get it to this point, we usually don't have to worry about having overmixed it. All right, if we mix it till it all comes together in the bowl and then do this, there is a chance we overwork it. So even though it's a little messier and possibly scarier, this is my preferred method. And then what we'll do once we do have this shaped into a pretty neat rectangle, about an inch to an inch and a half high, is we'll take our bench scraper or knife and cut this into four semi-uniform pieces. And then once we have four squares, we will cut those diagonally to make eight beautiful triangles. At which point, once cut, we can transfer those onto a silpat line baking sheet. And I really could not have done a worse job placing these down. Okay, I didn't have enough room for my last one and ended up having to rearrange them all, which is not ideal. You really should only place them down once. But anyway, these things happen. So I went ahead and spaced those out a little better. Oh, and I should mention, before these go in the oven, we usually brush these with something like an egg wash or some butter or milk. But because the tops are gonna to get covered in a glaze, we don't have to. Which means once these are panned up, they're ready to transfer into the center of a 375 degree oven for about 25 minutes or so, or until they look like this. Which if we're being honest, does not look that great. Okay, we might get a little bit of browning on the edges and the bottom should definitely be a beautiful golden brown. But because we didn't brush the tops, they're gonna to be kind of pale. And that along with all those black seeds does not give them the most gorgeous look ever. But don't worry, the final product's gonna be beautiful. And then what we'll do once these come out is let them sit for five minutes before carefully transferring them onto a rack to cool because we really don't wanna glaze these until they're room temp. And while we're waiting, we'll use that time to make our glaze, which for me is gonna start with some beautiful ripe sweet strawberries that I'm gonna to add to this mixing bowl, at which point I'm gonna take a potato masher and crush these down into a fine puree. And if you wanna drag out your food processor, go ahead. 
But I'm going to go ahead and burn off a few calories here in anticipation of taking in many, many more. And then what we'll do once our strawberries look a little something like this is go ahead and mix in enough powdered sugar to achieve our desired texture, which you're going to see in a minute. And by the way, measurements are really hard for something like this. So basically, we just start with a certain amount of liquid or fruit puree, and then we just keep adding powdered sugar until we're happy with it. And by the way, you don't have to use fruit here. Or you can just do a simple white glaze with milk, or some yogurt, or buttermilk, or even lemon juice to make a lemon glaze. But for my money, the strawberry glaze will look and taste the best for this. All right, so that's up to you. I mean, you are after all the Ponce de Leon of your lemon poppy seed scone. And speaking of the fountain of youth, it's a proven fact that if you make your own baked goods at home, you will definitely live longer, as long as you don't eat too many. Then all bets are off. And that's it. Once we have our glaze as thick as we want, assuming our scones are fully cooled, we can go ahead and spread that over the top. And then once that's set, it's very important that we let these sit for a while. Okay, until that glaze kind of thickens up and the surface dries out. And this is especially important if you have a mustache. Okay, so once glaze, we'll let those sit for about a half hour or so, until that surface is basically dry to the touch. And as these sit, if some of it happens to drip down the sides, even better. But anyway, I went ahead and finished those up, and very patiently let them air dry, at which point they're ready to enjoy, possibly alongside a few whole strawberries. And regardless of which glaze you go with, this really is an absolutely delicious scone. All right, lemon and poppy seed is a classic pairing, and when the delivery system is a very light, buttery scone, that combination of flavors is really at its best. So I really was thrilled with how this came out. And like I said, that fresh strawberry glaze really was perfect for this. Not to mention really pretty. But anyway, that's it. Lemon poppy seed scones with fresh strawberry glaze. A very, very simple, albeit slightly messy recipe. That like I said earlier, would be perfect for any of your special occasion brunches. Or maybe to bring into work when you want that coworker to fail the drug test, so you get the promotion. And again, I'm basing that scenario on what I've seen in sitcoms, which I've always found to be pretty accurate. But no matter the occasion, I really do hope you give these a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. <laughs>